We go to the international meetings, and we won't even sign them. And we say the American standard of living is not up for negotiation. That's a Bush, Bush one statement that he made at Rio. And the current US administration says it's too inconvenient and too expensive for our current main industries. So we'll sit on the sidelines despite being the largest historic emitter in the world. That doesn't make us look too moral, and it doesn't force cooperation. So you have China, India, and other countries saying, we're going to hold the sustainability agenda of the planet hostage to our brand of, of equity. Well, we catch up to you, we'll take targets. And we're saying we're going to hold the sustainability agenda of the planet hostage to our brand of consumption because you're just overpopulated and corrupt. This is what I call the, the, um, the victims as villains slide. And my final polar bear slide when I'm at this. The bad news is the ice cap is melting and it's going to be almost impossible to catch seals. The good news is if we keep moving south, there are tons of fat animals called humans who can't run very fast. <laughs> and it was called the map of meat, guilty. <laughs> so the real question is, it isn't humans versus nature. Humans are making the choices. These guys don't vote. But we have to decide how we want to deal with our resources and what is an ethical legacy to our children and grandchildren. Is it just a little bit richer and a bigger automobile and a slightly larger house? Or is it a world that doesn't have biotic impoverishment, missing ice sheets, displaced sea levels, uh, and all kinds of difficulties? And that is a value choice, and the value choice is about ethics. And therefore, it's critical. And I'm very appreciative that the religious communities are in this debate because you need to be. Thank you. Ali Grover Bingham is a priest in the Episcopal Diocese of California. She founded and leads the Regeneration Project and California Interfaith Power and Light. She organizes faith communities to take action on climate change and earth stewardship. Any, any church, synagogue, mosque who's not yet a member, sign up for a California Faith Power and Light, and they have fantastic resources. She's been recognized by Chris Magazine as one of the 15 most influential green religious leaders in the world, along with the Dalai Lama and the leader of the Greek Orthodox Church and, and a number of others. So I'd like to welcome you to, to speak to us.
When we talk about global warming in America, it isn't just the climate that's changing, but the attitude towards dealing with it. It can be expressed in one sentence, the ice is melting. On the bad news side, the ice is melting even faster than the scientists predicted it just a few years ago, but on the good news side, the ice is melting in Washington, D.C. After years of politicians refusing to take action on cutting greenhouse gas emissions, there is a positive shift in attitude. What can you do? You can join California Interfaith Power and Light. You can put in compact fluorescent light bulbs, drive energy efficient cars, get energy efficient appliances, ride a bike, walk, and whenever possible, buy renewable energy. Efficiency is very important. Conservation is crucial. And every one of us can turn off any appliance or light that we're not using. But the single most important thing that we can do at this point in time is to vote for leaders who will implement policies that will provide us with a sustainable future. Policies that will reverse the rising pollution, policies that will encourage clean energy, and vote for a leader who will commit to a response to global warming. I know things are changing for the better, and you all are part of it. Make a commitment today to become aware of how your behavior affects your neighbor. And if you're a person of faith, accept the responsibility to be a steward of creation. Walk with God, and you can make the adjustments in your life that we need to make in order to save this fragile earth, our island home. We're all in this together, one family with one shared purpose, one body, one spirit, and one hope in God's call to us. Thank you. And our moderator is Margaret Suozo, who was a, a key member of our organizing committee and organized the Step It Up Rally in April at Mitchell Park, if any of you went to that. She's an energy efficiency expert, an author, and, and, and just a, a tremendous organizer. If you ever want to um, organize anything, she's a key person to have on your committee. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mariana. Um, do the slides, Arthur? Coming up. OK. So here's where the rubber meets the road. We've certainly heard a lot that motivates us to action. And now we are, we're going to talk a little bit about what exactly we can do to address climate change in our own lives, through our social um, interchanges in our churches and our schools and our neighborhoods. Sally alluded to some of those, and Steve mentioned a few, but we'll get into a little deep more detail. We have four great panelists today. Um, they're going to talk about transportation-related emission reductions and carbon offsets, and we're going to hear a little bit about home energy efficiency. And um, we're going to hear a little bit about solar uh, financing and financing solar, solar uh, panels. And lastly, we're going to hear from Susan Chamberlain from First Presbyterian Church on um, some actions that their congregation has taken to address climate change. For those of you who are PG&E customers, I'm very proud of our company for having been the only utility to support AB32, which is the Global Warming Act, and to have testified twice before Barbara Boxer's commission. <laughs> Putting a challenge forward to CEOs and companies working with the environmental community in US CAP, asking the United States to please have a cap and trade. Please regulate us. OK. Um, so PG&E offers an integrated package of products. Uh, we do everything from energy efficiency to the California Solar Initiative to um, the clean air vehicles projects that we work on and also Climate Smart. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about those tools that we have available today for you. But what we have to think about is reduce what you can and offset the rest and basically use energy more efficiently. Well, how many of you know uh, how much of your carbon footprint of your home um, it, it comes from natural gas? Is it 20%, 30%, 40%, or 68%? <laughs> Who wants to go for item D? 68% of your carbon footprint of your home 
comes from natural gas. Why? Because PG&E already has among the cleanest grids in the nation. We already have over 50% of the energy you get for electricity is already carbon free.